Hello students, welcome to the class of Central System 1. I am Sianjali Mukherjee, Assistant Professor of Electrical Engineering Department of Narula Institute of Technology. Today, our topic is the Mathematical Modeling of Mechanical System. These are the content. We will discuss in this lecture is translational and rotational systems, how to draw the free body diagram, the parameters of the mechanical systems, the mathematical model of mechanical systems, and mathematical models of liquid level systems. So, consider the translational systems. Actually, the mathematical model consists of a collection of equations describing the behavior of the system. The dynamic behavior of the system is represented by the set of differential equations which are obtained based on the fundamental laws of the physical system. In the last class, we have studied that for electrical systems, we have applied the KCL and KVL. And here, we will apply the Newton's law for the mechanical systems. The mechanical systems can generally be classified as the translational system and the rotational systems. The translational system is related to the force and the translational motion, whereas the rotational system is related to torque and the angular motion. Next is the fundamental components of the translational system. The first one it is considered as a mass, and mass is a mechanical element. And it has some inertia. And when a force F is applied to the mass, then the displacement takes place. Suppose in this direction is given, x1 is the direction of the displacement, and due to this, an opposite force the, um, F of M is generated in the opposite direction, and that is known as the reaction force. In the reaction force, f of m is proportional to the acceleration. Or we can say this reaction force is equal to mass into acceleration. A represents the acceleration and A is equal to b square h t square where h is the displacement of the system. So, using the Newton's law, we can say the total force applied capital F is equal to m b square h to d b square. And we have considered that the mass is concentrated at the body. The next is the spring. The spring stores energy during the variation of its shape due to the elastic deformation resulting from the application of force capital F. And due to the application force capital F, a restoring force F of K is produced. And this force depends on the stiffness constant small k and the displacement. So, F k is the k into small x and according to the Newton's law, total force applied force F is equal to k into x for the 1 in fifth spring. And when we consider the spring whose both ends have the displacement x1 and x2, so for that spring, the total force F is equal to k into x1 minus x2. That means we have to consider both the displacements. Next is the damper. The damper mm, is one ended fixed over here, and for this damper, both the mm, displacements are connected. And when a force F is applied to this dashboard, then a reactive force. F of B is produced and which is proportional to the velocity. So, F B is written as B into D X D T where B is the free stress friction coefficient and D X D T is the velocity which we consider X as the displacement. So, for the one in fifth dashboard, the equation is total force equal to B into D X D T and for both displacement, we have to consider the displacement B into D X quantity minus D X D T. So, these are the fundamental components of the translational system. Next is the rotational system. And the rotational system is related to the torque and the angular displacement. 
yes the torque is represented by capital t and the angular displacement is represented by the theta now the first is the moment of inertia of mass and we have assumed that it is concentrated at the center of gravity of the body now due to the application of this torque capital t it produces an angular acceleration and the reaction torque tj is equal to j into d square theta dt square where theta is the angular displacement and d square theta dt square is the actually angular acceleration so from newton's law we can say t is equal to the tj equal to j d square theta dt square and j is the moment of inertia next is the spring now due to application of the torque in the spring it is twisted by the angle theta and the spring will produce an opposite torque that is equal to ck for the one in six this ck is equal to k theta so the total torque applied t equal to k theta and when both ends are free then capital t that is the total applied torque equal to k into theta 1 minus theta 2 that means both the displacement have to be considered here next is the dashboard or the damper now the mm, dashboard uh, when torque is applied to the dashboard and then it is opposed by the damping torque that is cb and cb is equal to d into d theta dt where b is the stress friction coefficient and d theta dt is the angular velocity if both ends of the dashboard is not fixed and both ends have two different theta 1 and theta 2 then we have to consider c is equal to b into d theta 1 dt minus d theta 2 dt next is procedure of drawing of free body diagram now to draw the free body diagram first we have to consider some assumptions so first is the direction of the displacement that means the direction of the force or for the rotational system the direction of torque or the mass as the positive direction then we have to find out all the forces for translational system and all the torque for the rotational system next we have to apply the newton's law of the motion so let us consider the example one in example one a mass is connected with the spring and the dashboard and the force is applied to the right hand side direction and due to this force direction of force the displacement occurs that is x t now we have to consider the free body diagram of mass m before drawing the free body diagram we have to consider one more point that is the inertia force will always opposite of the acceleration and the acceleration and the displacement have the same direction and if we consider the spring and the damper then the for the extended spring so after application of a speed the spring is if extended then force is working outward of the body and if that is compressed then it will act towards the body so this is the mass m force is connected in this direction and displacement is this direction so uh, acceleration have the direction same as this displacement and the inertia force if m will have the opposite direction of this displacement so if m is acting in this direction next when we apply the force in this direction and x t is in this direction that means the k and b both are extended when k and b both are extended then they will exert the force on the direction outwards the body hence the opposite direction force is equal to summation of all these two forces so we can write the capital f is equal to m d square x t square that is the fm plus b d x d t that is the f d plus k x that is the f k next consider the second example here the moment of inertia is given and torque is applied due to that torque the theta is rotating in this direction in the same manner for this moment of inertia the torque due to this moment of inertia the force uh, torque due to the distress coefficient and the spring will act on the opposite direction and the summation of the 
these two stocks is equal to the total applied stock. So total C is equal to J D square theta D D square plus D D theta D T plus J theta. This is the C of J. This D D theta D T is the T D and J theta is the C into T. So these are the parameters of the mechanical system. So these are the parameters of translational system, the quantity and the symbol and the units are given. And here for the rotational system. For an example, we can say in the translational system, we will use the force. The symbol of force is Ft and unit is Newton. Whereas in the rotational system, we will use the torque and which symbol is capital T and unit is Newton meter. So these are the different parameters that are used in both translational and rotational systems. Next is the mathematical model of mechanical system. Here we have to describe the mathematical model of the given system. Here two masses M1 and M2 are connected. This one end is the fixed end and D1, D2 and K1 and K2 is connected in between M2 and the mass 1. The total force is applied in the downward direction and due to the application of force, the mass 1 has displacement of X1 and mass 2 has the displacement of X2. So we have to write the differential equations for this model. So first we need to free body, draw the free body diagram of mass 1. So first consider the mass 1. When mass 1 is considered, the applied force is in this direction, downward direction. So the displacement is given as the downward direction. So the inertia force will act in the opposite direction of this displacement. So Fm is the opposite of the displacement. Similarly, when M1 goes downward, that means the B1 and K1 both are extended and this B1 and K1, due to this B1 and K1, the force of K1 and B1 will act outwards the body. So the summation of all these two forces is equal to the opposite force F of T according to the D'Alembert principle. So F of T is equal to M1, the mass 1, D square X1, D square plus now B1. Now B1 is connected in between mass and mass 2. So we have to consider both the displacement. So B1 into DX1 DT minus DX2 DT plus K1. Again, the K1 is connected between M1 and M2. So we are considering both displacement. So this is the first equation of mathematical model. Next, we have to consider the mass 2. Now mass 2 is connected with both B1, B2 and K1, B2. So when mass 2 goes to the direction of the displacement, B2 and K2 both are extended. And for the extended string, the F of K2 and F of B2 will be in the outward direction. Because for the extended string or extended damper, the force working is outward the body. And due to this displacement, this, this direction, the inertia force will act in the opposite direction of this displacement. So F of M1 is acting in the above direction. Now for the damper and the K1. So D when M2 goes downward direction and it is also going to downward direction because this end is only fixed. So B1 and K1 both are in the extended position. So F of K1 and F of B1 go in the downward direction. So using these two, we can write the total force f of k1 plus f of b1 is equal to the force f of k2 plus f of m2 plus f of b2. Now what is f of k1? Now k1 is connected in between the mass 1 and mass 2 and both displacements are working on it. So k1 into x2 minus x1 plus same is applicable for b that is b1 into dx2 minus dx1 dt. That is equal to K2. K2 is connected only for M2. So K2 into X2 plus B2 is only connected to M2. So B2 into the X2 DT plus due to this force M of 2 D square X2 DT square. So these equations 1 and equation 2, these two are the mathematical model of the given mechanical system. Next is the mathematical model 
of the liquid level system. So consider a liquid level system over here and through this tap the fluid is flowing through the tank and one valve is connected to this and QI is the volume inflow rate of the system. Now due to this output channel one valve is connected also in the output channel and R is the resistance of this output out flow and Q0 is the volume outflow rate. So here we will assume that the liquid is incompressible. Basically the fluid can be divided into two categories. One is incompressible and another is compressible fluid. Now if the density of the fluid remains constant despite the change in pressure then the fluid is known as the incompressible. Otherwise it is compressible. So in practically most of the fluids are compressible to some extent. But here we will assume that the liquid is incompressible. Next A is the area of the cross sectional area of the tank and small a is the level height of the liquid. And for this liquid we will consider rho is the density. Now we can obtain that mass of the tank will be rho into a into a. Now what is the rate of change of mass? The rate of change of mass is the m dot and that is equal to rho that is the density into the total mass inflow rate minus the total outflow rate. Where Qi and Q0 are the volume inflow rate and volume outflow rate. So from this equation mass of tank equal to rho a h we can write down that m dot that is equal to rho into a into dh dt where a into dh dt is equal to qi minus q0. Now the q0 can be written as the ratio of height of the liquid level h divided by the resistance to flow through the outflow valve. And rearranging these equations we can write down ra into dh dt is equal to r into qi minus h where ra is the hydraulic capacitance of the system and this equation represents this ra into dh dt equal to ri r into qi minus h represents the mathematical model of this given system. So in this class we have learned about the different mathematical models of translational system and rotational systems, the different parameters and the mathematical models of liquid level systems. And these are my references. I guess these two are they can be textbooks, Keogata and Anand Rajan. And thank you.